Good evening. I'd like to call this meeting of the Southampton Town Board to order on this 28th day of January 2020. Please rise if you're able to join us for the Pledge of Allegiance. The Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Let's remain standing and join together for a brief moment of silence as we like to do at the beginning of our meeting to honor our veterans and uh, all those currently serving uh, around the world, defending our freedoms. Um, we uh, certainly are aware of the risks that they face and let's keep them in our thoughts and prayers. Let's join together in silence. Please be seated. Madam Clerk, would you kindly call the roll? Certainly. Supervisor Schneiderman. Present. Councilwoman Lofstad. Here. Councilman Martell. Present. Councilman Bouvier. Here. Councilman Skivone. Present. All right, so you have the agenda before you. Uh, I'd like to add a couple items to it. There's three resolutions in the walk-on folder, in the red folder, uh, 33484. Recall and amends uh, Town Board Resolution 1265 of 19 for the Hampton Hopper and Hampton Jitney, 33486 uh, authorizes the supervisor to sign a second amendment to a lease agreement with uh, American Towers LLC for cell tower lease at 507 Middle Line Highway. And lastly, 33488 is uh, warrant number two, also includes. Uh, Capital number two, CPF number two, and payroll liability. I'll make a motion to add those. Second. Seconded, okay, by Councilman Lillian. Yes. All right, we need four. So all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? <coughs> all right, Sunday, those will be part of our agenda. <coughs> okay, um, so let me, uh, first item here is uh, approval of the minutes of the regular town board meeting of January 14th, 2020. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes. Second. Seconded by Councilman Schiavone. All in favor? Aye. 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 Approved. All right, we'll move on to communications. Uh, Madam Clark, would you please read the communications? The following communications have been received in the office of the town clerk. We have received public notices from the Department of the Army, a letter of coordination regarding Little Neck Road, Town of Southampton, Village of Sag Harbor, public hearing notice, and a local law adoption. Village of Southampton Zoning Board of Appeals adjoining neighbor notification for First Neck Lane in the Village of Southampton. Village of West Hampton Beach Planning Board adjoining neighbor notification for Main Street in the Village. We have received New York State Liquor Authority 30 day advance notice to municipalities from the listed entities and financial disclosure statements from the uh, listed individuals. We've also received emails and letters regarding the following. The final supplemental GEIS for Hampton Bay's Downtown Overlay District and Planning Board matter of the Southampton Country Day Camp applications. The following bid openings took place on January 16th, RFP for the preparation of a housing plan. January 22nd, replacement parts for Chevrolet GM second notice and Southampton Amer African American Museum completion. And that concludes the communications for this meeting's agenda. All right, we're going to go to public hearings. If somebody wishes to be heard at a public hearing or in public portion, which will follow, please fill out a card. The cards are available uh, at the gentleman right outside the door here. So Madam Clerk, uh, we only have one public hearing. Would you read the, uh, the first and only uh, public hearing notice? Certainly. Public hearing number one, on the acquisition of a historic preservation and conservation easement on the Topping Rainer House on property located at 121 South Road, West Hampton. All right, Lisa Combrink, our CPF program manager, is here to introduce this. Uh, good evening, Mr. Supervisor, members of the board, council, and Madam Clerk, I'm Lisa Combrink, the CPF program manager. I'm here tonight on a public hearing to purchase an historic preservation and conservation easement on the property known as the Topping Rainer House. It's owned by Eleanor and James Coble. 
It's located in West Hampton on 121 South Road. It's Suffolk County tax map number 900-376-22. This property was considered for landmarks designation by your board at your last public hearing, at which time you ruled favorably on the property and determined that it did qualify under the town code for landmarks designation. Uh, in March of 2017, our landmarks and historic districts board had recommended landmarks designation, and the planning board um, shortly thereafter also expressed its full support for the landmarks designation that you approved at your last meeting. Uh, the, the house uh, that's the subject, would be the subject of the easement, was built in 1890. Uh, the clerk has been nice enough to hand out uh, two photographs showing uh, a side view of the house and also a view looking straight on to the house. As you can see, it's a late Victorian style home um, it has uh, it's two stories. As you can see from the photograph, it has turned posts on its wraparound porch, decorative brackets, and also a decorative gable treatment. It's a really beautiful home. And um, I met with the owners a few months ago, and they expressed the desire to move forward with this process to encumber the house and the property with this historic preservation easement. And that would allow the property and would require the property, the house in particular, to be maintained in its current or better condition than it is today. And that easement also puts further restrictions on the kind of work that can be done on the house and really ensures that the, visi the, the visible look of the house as we know it today will remain essentially the same or better going forward, and that would be in perpetuity. The purchase price for the easement, which is based on an appraisal, is one hundred thousand dollars. All right. Questions. So, in the resolution, is in your package for later for possible adoption. So, for the hundred thousand, first, the, the two, when they appraise these, arriving at that hundred thousand dollars. So, obviously, the house loses value, roughly equivalent to a hundred thousand dollars, by us having these restrictions on. The facade? I, I couldn't say whether it loses value, but I know that it puts uh, an easement of this type is recorded against the property, and it certainly puts significant restrictions on what can be done with the house moving forward. So the public can't be demolished, can't be significantly changed. Uh, the height of the house has to remain the same, except under very limited circumstances. So to some people, that may be seen as a di so diminution So the value. CPF program lets us take an interest in the property um, of this kind to make sure that it, its exterior, the public can enjoy the, you know, as an educational, I guess, experience to see these historic homes, what it was built here back in, how old is this? Uh, this was built in 1890. 1890. Right. Uh, and it, so this allows these homeowners basically to better maintain these and keep them historic, but they're locked in. Uh, is, do we have any restrictions that will guarantee that the public will be able to see it, that it won't be hedged in and, you know, we'll have spent $100,000 and nobody will enjoy it? Yes. Other than the owner? Yes. That's one of the owner's covenants. Um, that they undertake by signing the easement, and it requires that no, uh, no uh, structures or vegetation be allowed to diminish the view of the property uh, from the street or from, from the exterior. So do we record what, I guess we have photographic record. But right. 50 there was years from now, somebody said, oh, I haven't diminished it. You'd have to go back and see how visible it was. 50 years earlier. So we have some record, a site plan or something? Yes, we do. As, as part of uh, any CPF purchase, uh, my office prepares what's called baseline documentation. That includes photographs. And the two photographs that you have tonight are part of that baseline documentation. Those are dated in our database. So we know, as of the date those photographs were taken, exactly what the house looks like. And we make an annual inspection and document the inspection with photographs on, an, on a yearly basis. So now 20 years from now, a new owner of this property has the house and wants to build a modern, whatever is modern 20 years from now. 
they can't do it. Right? Correct. They're, they're they could not demolish the structure. They're locked Correct. in and they can't buy their way out of this? No, they can't. No, because when we purchase this easement, um, we are not allowed to give it away or do anything so um, that would diminish it. That would that would be considered an alienation. So they can't and that's just prohibited. Pay us back and not, no, no, they cannot. The easement cannot be extinguished in that way. So it's a it's a big commitment on behalf it's, of the property owner. It's a very big commitment, and based on my meeting with uh, the two property owners, Eleanor and James, they were very enthusiastic about doing this. I believe they're here tonight. They're in the audience. And they were here last at your last public hearing for the landmarking designation, and uh, the, the, this they've, this property has been in their family for some time, and I know that it means a lot to them to be able to preserve the house and so make this it is better. Basically, it's a it's a tool to provide the owners the economic resources to maintain the. This, it, these things are so expensive to maintain, so this gives them a little help. That's certainly one of the benefits, right. and it allows, as you said, the public, the neighbors, to really appreciate the historic nature of right. that area. Because I, I know sometimes, and I'll turn it over to other board members, I know in the past sometimes when we tried to preserve a historic structure, the town stepped in and acquired the structure, mm -hmm. and then it's off the tax rolls, and we end up having to foot the bill for everything, you know, maintaining all the, you know, the heating systems, and you know, mechanicals and exterior and everything. So this is, if in terms of bang for the buck for preserving historic buildings, this is a great way to go, these facilities. Yes. Yeah. I, I should point out also that it's, uh, it, the property is archived through our landmarks board as well. I know yes. our chair is here tonight, Ed Wazowski, to if anybody wanted to ask him questions. <coughs> but the, uh, this is an extensive record of the history of the house and uh, right. site plans and everything else. Yeah, so he testified. Pretty, yes, pretty Bill Hine prepared a, a very lengthy report on this property um, in, I, I believe it was uh, 2017, and it contains uh, an extensive history of the neighborhood, of how this house was built, who built it, who lived in it, uh, the surrounding homes. It's really interesting, and it contains a lot of really nice photographs of the house and the neighborhood. Can we talk to another question? I saw you leaning in before. Well, I had a question about the term. Uh, uh, it has to remain in its current condition or better. It's still going to remain in the Victorian style. Correct. Uh, the paint colors are going to remain white or close to it. Th there's uh, there's standards that are set for mm -hmm. properties like this that are landmarked, and so the owner will be required to stay within. Uh, those guidelines um, so it doesn't have to look exactly the same um, you know they can paint it but within certain parameters right replace yeah. the shingles and what needs to be mm -hmm. done yeah. okay anybody else yeah, Lisa is there any kind of markings on the property once we do take the rights to preserving it you know the CPF lands usually have a little sign somewhere right I, I think we could certainly discuss mm -hmm. that I <coughs> a landmark sign I think that would be great it's certainly something we could discuss. <laughs> it would be nice to have a marker. Could you potentially pay for that sign? Yes. It, that, that's a great idea, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. landmark home, you know, with the name of the home, whatever, the historic name. I mean, typically, we do. Built in, you know, first house, third house, whatever it is. And, and you know, yeah, that, that, would, that would be great. And we could certainly work with our landmarks board in developing the language for that song. That would be great. Okay, a great suggestion. Any uh, other questions? Anyone else? Okay, thank you. Okay, thank Lisa, you. all right. Um, to the public, I have one card here. Uh, Ed Wisnowski, our chair of our landmarks and historic districts board. Uh, good evening, Supervisor, members of the Town Council. Uh, we're very supportive of this idea that uh, historic preservation easements uh, be acquired on uh, the town's older and more historic buildings. Uh, this, if it is approved, will be <coughs> the third, uh, will be the third uh, easement. Uh, there's one prior in uh, Hampton Bays, one prior in Sagaponic. 
Uh, and given the fact that a, 19, a 2014 survey of town properties showed more than a thousand potentially uh, worthy historic buildings, uh, three is a very small uh, score, so to speak, with respect to uh, using this tool uh, to help preserve the historic character and historic identity of the town of Southampton. Uh, so uh, the Landmarks Board is uh, very hopeful that uh, if this goes through, that there will be more people paying attention to uh, the historic character of their communities, the structures around them, uh, the possibility that uh, not only for landmarks, but any potential structures in any historic district that might be formed in the town uh, in the coming future. Uh, so uh, with that, uh, the Landmarks Board pays a compliment as well to the work of uh, the manager of the Community Development Fund uh, for bringing this uh, to a focus and uh, to uh, the action tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Thank, you. Thank you for your work on Landmarks. All right, those, that's the only card I have. Anyone else who wanted to be heard? You good? <laughs> uh, we, it's why we're here. If you, if you want to speak, you come up. Uh, Anton, you're here for a different one. <coughs> we're not on public portion yet. We're just on the middle of a public hearing on a historic preservation easement. Anyone else who wants to be heard on the historic preservation easement? Seeing none, I will make a motion to close. Second. Uh, second by Councilman Bouvier. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. So that is closed and is eligible for a vote later in the evening all right so i'd like to move on now to the public portion um, each speaker will be afforded three minutes to make their comments known um, i'm going to give a an accommodation to our first speaker um, who has some um, who may need a little bit more time right gail lombardi you got if you uh, want extra time it's it's yours and uh Good afternoon. Um, you know, you have to understand, Supervisor Nyman, the accommodations go past a couple extra minutes. The fact that you that, that you don't provide um, large print and audio on all your documents, I think, violates the Americans with Disability Act. Um, but that's a lawsuit for a different day. Um, I'm here today to discuss an extension of yesterday's Hampton Bay's uh, Civic Association meeting, where the questions were. Um, they needed to be put on postcards where we couldn't ask our own questions. And I go back to a question of a person asked you, Supervisor Snyderman, regarding the, um, the penalties, how many penalties were, pay, uh, were paid for the Bel Air. And the issue has been raised, I think, about five years. I had a dollar for every time that question was asked of someone on this board or members of your administration, I could have paid my taxes. So you're you didn't really provide full and complete information. You said it's in the courts, but when actually it's actually in your agreement that you signed in Article 34, saying that there was a stipulation of discontinuance of, of um, I can't even read my own handwriting, of all the penalties and violations. So my concern has always been, since I first came here, I don't care what your answer is. I don't. I never. Can I see the copy of what you have? Where is my signature here? I don't see it. That's the agreement. I only made a copy of, I don't know who signed the agreement. I assumed you signed the agreement. Um, I way, only have, uh, that's the, that is the FOIL copy, one page of the FOIL copy. The town attorney may be able to provide some information on that. I'm not, I didn't ask the question. What I'm saying is that. Well, okay, I'd like to be able to provide you with information. The information has been asked for years, and no one has come and said this is the amount that he was charged, and this I'm is I'm not going to dock you any time. I'd just like to give you the information you're seeking. So if, if, you, if you would indulge me, if I could have the town attorney weigh in on that issue, because it did come up last night. Mm -hmm. um, the town board never waived any fees. I don't believe there was any final adjudication of any of those things with the court, right. any findings of, it's in the of guilt. So let, right. let, let the, right. It is correct. There was never any adjudication. There was never any judgments. 
it was pending violations. It was pending safety violations. And I see my fire marshals here. He was very familiar with this case. Our, our primary concern, obviously, is the health and safety. Um, and they, uh, over the years, they did comply with that. The town primarily seeks compliance in these matters. Um, at the time of the negotiation and the purchase of the property, there was still some pending violations out there. Uh, various amounts as part of the negotiations the town and the, and the individual that we bought the property from we agreed on a sum of money taking consideration what possible violations might be there and what what violations the town or the, or the court would actually place you know uh, ultimate judgments on the case so um, I can say for the record that we bought the purchase we bought the property for significantly lower than the appraisal and we took the consideration that there was possible fines and then we wrapped that possible fines into the, the ultimate and you still purchase. haven't you still haven't provided the number and in fact the purchase well, I'm price, sorry what number are you looking for I'm looking for the number the number that's been asked for years what were the total in history right. the violations that were it the, the, right. the fines that were issued right. the fines that were issued we don't right we can't so issue a fine we can, I realize that the court we can submit a violation violation the, the, the fines fine. that were issued if by the courts and how much over the course of his years right. were waived or paid. Right. It's it's not like rocket science. Now, I can I can try to find out whether there was other fines that were paid previous years. It's a new year. point at this point. What my point? My point, which is getting lost in the okay. minutia. The point was that we've asked this question for years, years and years and years, and it never ever got answered. And again last night, it didn't get answered. So the point is, at this point, it's in litigation, people litigating whether the purchase, not the purchase, they bring with the purchase, but the use of the property. The, the issue is, we come, some of us, don't come, you know, with um, agreeing with what you do, and we ask questions because we want the, all the facts, the truth, all the facts, not just part of them, not just the ones that fit your vision, all the facts, because we want to make our own educated decisions. This is one question for five or six years. They probably get asked a hundred times and the same answer, well, it's this, it's that. Never got answered. The second question I asked last night, which was on a card, is what is the status from 2016 with the fire department property? This is a memo I have from Frank Sapone from 2016, saying that the fire department property $380,000 was going to be purchased with CPF, $20,000 that was going to be purchased with, uh, in the budget. You had a $4,000 grant in 2016 to buy that property. And what does Janice say? Well, we're working with the Board of Health. Well, really, because there's no mention that in 2016 there was also a fire department vote to sell that property at Alfred Coyote et al. for $1.3 million to a three-part subdivision. I don't think any of this is disclosed anywhere, including the EIS. You do not provide us full and complete information, and then you get annoyed at us when we ask for it. And I guess I was on the CAC. I resigned in 2018, and I guess now you just decide not to appoint people to the CAC. So that being said, we will continue. I will continue. You are not going to stop me from looking for things. You're not going to stop me from coming to these meetings. Just because I'm not going to a CAC meeting, I'm going to a civic meeting. I only come to this meeting. That was Simone Scotto's point for years. Why do we bother having the CAC meetings? We're just a buffer so we don't come to these meetings and they have to actually be put on the spot and answer these questions. So I'll continue to come to these meetings and ask the questions and make my statements and continue filing documents and continue finding the truth and continue highlighting where the truth is not provided to the community. And I'm sorry if it seems to upset people, but that's the future of our relationship, as I said when I was on from the CAC in 2018. Thank you. All right, thank you, Gail. I welcome your participation. Thank you. So um, we have one other card, the public portion, um, Anton Borgia. <coughs> How are you doing, Anton? Long time no see. Good evening, Mr. Supervisor, members of the board. My name is Anton Borovina. You might want to just take that mic. Just lift it up a little bit. Sure. There. Yeah, there you go. I'll repeat that again. My name is Anton Borovina, and I uh, represent 
residents in the community that have owned property along Seasons Lane and the cul-de-sacs that are adjacent to the proposed project, I speak and I'm addressing the board in connection with Resolution 2020-179 concerning the Town Board's consideration of the concern for Independent Living's Full Gospel Church Change of Zone Petition. Um, we did receive notice yesterday regarding tonight's meeting. Uh, we, uh, we have concerns regarding the application. Uh, we were encouraged, uh, very much so, by the Board's commitment to entertain the application on condition that the, app, that the project would not include, or the, the local law uh, for the change zone would not include uh, access, or let, not allow for access, uh, along residential neighborhoods to the south and west of the property except for emergency vehicles. Uh, that, was a, that's a, that is a significant source of concern, and we are grateful that the board is appreciative of that significant concern. Uh, my questions, uh, I know it's preliminary. I know that um, uh, you don't have all the paperwork by the developer, and you'll be considering that in due course. Uh, importantly, we, we would like to know how the um, how the, um, by what mechanics would the emergency access uh, be placed? Uh, how would non-emergency access uh, vehicles uh, um, be prevented for, for, from gaining access from the property uh, onto Hillcrest and the adjoining and the adjoining neighborhoods? Um, and um, and how would it uh, and how would it be enforced? Um, uh, there are uh, there's there's also the potential for parking. Uh, parking considerations. As a result of allowing for that access, uh, there's a foreseeable chance that uh, residents and others uh, visiting or residing at the at the project at the property uh, would use um, would park along Hillcrest. Uh, the road the road, as the board is very much aware, is 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 very narrow. Um, uh, you have cars parked on both sides of the road, and or the the notion that the traffic would increase uh, to include even a heavy preponderance of emergency vehicles, for example, could pose issues, but that the board will consider in due course when the application is presented and, um, uh, and uh, comments uh, uh, are given and considerations given with respect to that item. Um, uh, that's, that's really it. I just wanted to um, um, uh, state that we do um, uh, have concerns but we are uh, appreciative of the fact that one major component is the condition that the applicant do not have, or no, would not include access along the uh, 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 property uh, opposite uh, County Road 39, except for emergency vehicles. Okay. Right. And we, we can talk at a later <laughs> date about how you could construct that. But they do make breakaway barriers and things like that, you know, Partitions that are solid, but emergency vehicles know that they can. You know, Tommy John is probably a little bit more familiar as a former fireman, but there are ways to construct. Uh, so it's it's not just the sign "Do not enter," but a physical barrier. Well, I'm aware. I'm aware. There's two there's two flavors of this. Um, uh, one, I'm aware, where anybody with <laughs> could just a, a, a three year old could push the gate open. Um, uh, the another one is is where there is some kind of a. Um, uh, mechanism with, uh, accessible only by emergency vehicles where the gate opens uh, and that would prevent uh, anyone other than emergency vehicles going through the gates uh, but you'll consider that at the, at the appropriate yeah, and, time. And of course you know the town is a little bit unusual in that we have a two-step process right so tonight this resolution that you speak of would just simply allow an application That's most right. towns they go right to the application they make their application for a zone change we have this additional step that's right. And yeah. should we decide to allow the application, then of all these details would be then. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Supervisor. All right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Have a good evening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Um, thank you. All right. Those are the only two cards I have, though I suspect there's others who wish to be heard. Is there anyone else who wishes to be heard in public portion? John, were you here to speak on a resolution? Okay. okay. That's for the hazmat vehicle? Yes, sir. Yeah. All right. Any, anyone else who wishes to be heard going once? Twice? Three times? All right. Motion to close public portion. <laughs> 
Second. Second by Councilman Schiavone. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Um, Mr. Fasano, is he still here? Yeah, I think he just so? swapped that one at time. Uh, okay. So, um, do we want to take anything out of order? Um, we certainly could take the historic easement out of order. We could take the concern for independent living out of order. Um, let's let's do that. What's the, what's the resolution? That's concern for independent living, and what's the historic? You have page one. We could do the hazmat rescue truck too. Page one also. We could do the hazmat <laughs> rescue truck too. Page one hundred seven is a landmark. It's uh, one ninety two. <clears throat> right, so let's let's do that one first. So let me make a motion to take page one ninety two of 2020, page 107, authorizing the acquisition of a historic preservation and conservation easement from the Topping Rainer House on property located at 121 South Road, West Hampton. Second. Second on the motion. Now you've all seen the pictures of it. Um, I think there was a, a very strong presentation by the Landmarks Committee Chair, Ed Wasnowski, as well as our CPF Program Manager. Um, you know, maintaining a historic building like this can be very expensive. A hundred thousand is a drop in the bucket. So, uh, start. you know, I look at this building, I look at some of the architectural details, and it really is a gem. And uh, I, I think worthy of some assistance in preserving it. So, uh, uh, I'd like to support it. Does anybody else have any comments on it? Just that um, I can't. I can't think of a better set of hands to put this home in. And I. I Appreciate all the efforts you've gone through, and I know particularly with our with our landmarks board. So, so I thank you for it. All right. Anyone else? Sure. As a former social studies teacher, I appreciate the linkage to our past and uh, your commitment to uh, to put this home into perpetuity in the future, so uh, other generations can enjoy the view and appreciate the past as well. Hmm. All right. Um, all in favor. Aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstentions? Okay. It's unanimous. Congratulations. All right. Um, so that's first. Uh, we want to do concern for independent living next. Yeah. Have a page five. Seems like 95. 95? No. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, 95. All right. I'll make a motion uh, to take. 179 of 2020 out of the order. Second. Seconded by Councilman Scrooge. Uh, all in favor? Uh, aye. aye. All right. So, Sorry. So, okay. So now um, I'll make a motion to approve 179 of 2020, electing to consider concern for independent living full gospel church change of zone petition. Second. Seconded by Councilman Bouvier on the motion. You know, I, I put the caveat in here, if Mr. Fasano, as you know, that um, I did not want to consider access through either of the two neighborhoods, which will create, I think, a challenge for you. Um, you have obviously County Road 39, um, and you have the Rehabilitation Center, their fire access. I don't know what degree they will work with you, um, but I also understand a couple things. One is that you've been maintaining an option at a steep price for this property and time is of the essence so, so the town board has to do something either we're gonna tell you forget it or give it a shot and um, I you know I don't have to you know make the case for the need for affordable rentals I've said many times we need them and we need them particularly east of the Shinnecock Canal we have a serious lack of uh, of places where our workers can afford to live a decent life, not in a crowded basement, <coughs> in a trailer somewhere, but actually in a place to call home. So um, I don't, you know, should the board allow this application? It doesn't mean that it goes through. You still have to get the zone change approved, um, but it will allow you to make your case. There might be further questions about the number of units, but you. I did not put a restriction. I left it at 60, the original request. Though some of, I know some of my colleagues, 
you know, wanted to pare that down and, I, you know, I put it forth this way and said we'll have that the conversation later. So, um, you know, somebody asked me, uh, do we need it? And I know the report that was done years ago when I was at the legislature um, said we needed thousands of units. So we're doing our best with accessory apartments, with, you know, Spion, Spion Commons, which was 38 units, uh, Sandy Hollow, which was 28 units. It's still a drop in the bucket. It's a, and, and this will be a drop in the bucket too. So, but I'll, I'm, willing to, I'm willing to give it its day in court. So. <laughs> Uh, anyone else on the motion? Yeah, I'd like to speak. Um, so at the original meeting where the developer presented to the community, um, there was two main concerns. One was the access, so I appreciate that you addressed that. The other was density and traffic concerns that not only I think were brought up at that meeting, but also at um, subsequent CAC meetings. Um, so, so I just think that if this elect to consider is approved, that we really need to think about listening to the community and their con very real concerns about the, the density and the traffic that's going to affect their little area of this town. Um, and I just want to clarify that this elect uh, to consider is not approval of the project, as you said. Right. Anyone else? Sure. This is the uh, beginning of the process. I look forward to hearing community input. I look forward to hearing input from the village of Southampton. This is contiguous to the village and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll hear what they have to say but I certainly want uh, to to see the application, see it go forward and have community input. Input uh, it, it satisfies a need in our community particularly the 15% uh, uh, allocation for veterans I think is a, is a much needed uh, service for uh, a community out here as well as other places so uh, I am going to support it. Anyone else? So the last thing I'll say is, you know, this, you know, we've done other apartments, rental apartments in different parts of the town and heard concerns about, you know, taxes and schools and traffic and, and you know, why are we doing this in there, you know, this place or that place. This is my neighborhood. This is my neighborhood. Um, this is my school district. And uh, I'm happy to support this application moving forward. So, um, and I also uh, appreciate that this is a not-for-profit. You know, you're not doing this for personal gain. And uh, I do like the fact that you're trying to provide some housing for veterans. They've served our country uh, honorably, and uh, it's a way of giving back. So, all right. Uh, anyone else? All right, um, I'll, I'll call the vote. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? <clears throat> all right, approved. All right, uh, hazmat? What resolution is that? 131 on page 58. All right, 131, page 58, uh, 131 of 2020, uh, authorized the purchase of Encore Hazmat Rescue Truck from HGAC by Cooperative. I'll make a motion to take it out of order. Second. Okay. Seconded by Councilman Fovier. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, uh, now I will, uh, this is actually Tommy John, this is your resolution. Mm -hmm. Okay, Town Board Resolution 131 of 2020. This is to authorize the purchase of Encore Hazardous Materials Rescue Truck from HGAC by Cooperative. Second. Seconded by Councilman Lostad. Any discussion? Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. I heard, I heard five eyes. So congratulations. <laughs> Thank you guys for coming yeah. out. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. This was the board team. Uh, this you want to come here? Come, oh, come on. Come on. Up. Come John. on. Up. <laughs> John is from our fire marshal's office. <laughs> you stood up. <laughs> uh, John Rankin from the fire marshal's office. I just want to say thank you very much. The, the vehicle is definitely most needed. Um, and just so the board knows, um, our team is only one of three recognized throughout Suffolk County as an emergency response unit uh, for the hazmat for the, uh, for the county. Um, 
along with the other equipment that we have. Um, you may or may not be aware we have a couple other vehicles. We have trailers. We have two pickup trucks that, uh, that are capable of towing those trailers. Um, we've utilized a bit of the equipment that we have um, for prior calls. Um, and I, I think we have one of, the, one of the best teams that we have. And I really appreciate and thank you very much for the, uh, for the equipment. I hope we never have to use it. I <laughs> hope not either, but, but it's, <laughs> it's, it's giving past practices. <laughs> it's yeah. it's good to have it here. Almost definitely. You know, um, we, we train on a regular basis. Um, we try to do it at least every month. We get the entire team together and we focus on different things. Um, so hopefully with this, uh, it'll give us a, a little bit more of an edge. And as and you know, we have a new emergency services coordinator coming in too. Public yes, I saw that on the, uh, on the agenda. Looking to your meeting. This yes, he will be. Yeah. He'll be involved in that. And for the public's edification, uh, in the town of Southampton, we have uh, 11 fire districts, two fire departments, and we also have uh, the Gabriski Airport Fire Rescue Crew. And our hazardous materials uh, fire mar from the fire marshal's office would respond to any mutual aid um, for a hazardous materials situation. This is, the, uh, this is the handbook. There are hundreds of hazardous materials on our roads and our first responders, our volunteers, are trained in hazardous materials. And most of the training goes to you all. Yes, and sir. each substance has different, um, there, there are different ways of treating different hazardous materials. So this truck, you, you have to take incident command, you have to take, uh, you have to survey the situation, wind direction, the amount of damage, everything, and then take control of the situation and do what needs to be done. Yes, sir. So, That's no easy task. It really like, isn't. Like the supervisor said, we hope we never use it, but if we need it, it's good We're to there. have it. Prepare for the worst. Yes, sir. Hopefully and best. thank you, guys. Thank, thank you very much. Thank, thank, thank you very much. You. Hope for the best, prepare for the worst. Right? All right. So uh, can we go back to the top now? <laughs> mm -hmm. Anything else? That'd be a great uh, any, idea. Anybody waiting for anything else? <laughs> All right. All right, so we'll, we'll, John, you have the first one here. Yeah, I'm going to withdraw uh, this town board resolution 219-1248, some memorializing resolution in support of H.R. 763, enacting the Energy Innovation and Carbon Dividend Act of 2019 for reintroduction at a later date. Well, if you're going to withdraw the first one, I'll withdraw the second. <laughs> All right. So number one of 2020, Clark, I, I also would like to uh, withdraw that resolution. It's a another one on page 27 that uh, replaced it. So, so there's a substitution? For no, no, it's okay. just withdrawn. Okay. All right, so let's figure out what page that brings us to, because this is a long one. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, page 27. Oh, it's straight through to 27. All right, uh, number 118 of 20. 20, it, uh, like the one I withdrew with some changes, this is uh, the uh, adopts the procurement policy for 2020. We had a, uh, a work session on this. We were able to get some questions answered. So is there a second? Second. Right. Tom, uh, Councilman Schiavone on the second. All, any questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> Town Board Resolution 2020-119, authorization for the supervisor to sign application and contract to accept 2020 New York State Office of Children and Family Services funding for Southampton Town Youth Activities. <laughs> this is on page 49. Um, all second. All, any questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Approved. Town Board Resolution 120 of 2020, authorize the purchase of heavy-duty parts, sterling, Mac and Ford from Trucks with an X Incorporated using, using Suffolk County contract. Second. Seconded by Councilman Martell. All in favor? Aye. 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 Approved. Uh, Councilman Martell. Thank you. Town Board Resolution 121 of 2020 authorize the purchase of, for Caterpillar heavy equipment, parts, accessories, supplies, and related services. Second. Seconded by Councilman Bouvier. All in favor? Aye. 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 Town Board Resolution 122 of 2020. Authorize the purchase of automotive 
Ford Vehicle Parts and Service from Suffolk County contract with Newins Bayshore Ford Incorporated. Second. Second by the co-sponsor, Council Boogie. All in favor? Aye. 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 Approved. Town Board Resolution 123 of 2020, authorize the purchase of automotive dash Ford Vehicle Parts and Service from Suffolk County contract with Otis Ford Auto Body. Second. Seconded again by co-sponsor Bouvier. All in favor? Aye. 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 Town Board Resolution 124 of 2020. Authorize the purchase of replacement of heavy duty brake and truck parts from Fleet Pride Truck and Taylor Trailer, excuse me, parts. Seconded by Councilman Bouvier, I take it? Yes. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, seconded by Councilman Bouvier. All, all in favor? Aye. 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 Approved. Town, Town Board, Board Resolution 2020. Oh. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Julie's up. Town Board Resolution 2020-125 authorizes supervisor to execute the 2020 Human <laughs> Understanding and Growth Services HUGS contract. Second. Second by Councilman Martel. All in favor? Aye. I approved 126. Uh, co sponsor with Councilman Scavoni authorizes supervisor to sign 2020 contract extension Green Velvet Tree Inc. for tree and stump removal for east and west of the Shinnecock Canal. Second. Seconded by Councilman Scavoni. All in favor? Aye. 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 Approved. 127. Co sponsored with Councilman Scavoni. Authorized the supervisor to sign 2020 contract extensions with United Metro United Corp. as primary and Quad Sinclair Fuel Inc. as secondary for ultra low diesel fuel. Seconded Second. by Councilman Scavoni. All in favor? Aye. 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 Approved. Town Board Resolution 2020 128. Authorized the purchase of an x ray system from New York State OGS. Contract with Smith's Detection Incorporated. Second. Second by Council Bouvier. All in favor? Aye. 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 Approved 129 of 2020. Authorizes the purchase of auto parts and accessories from U.S. Communities Contract with Advance Auto Parts. Second. Seconded by Council Scavoni. All in favor? Aye. 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 Approved. Town Board Resolution 2 2020-130 to authorize the purchase of compact truck, truck track loader and compact excavator from New York State OGS contract with Clark Equipment Company doing business as Bobcat Company and Doosan Infracore Construction Equipment. Second. Seconded by Council Martel. All in favor? Aye. 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 <coughs> Aye approved. And we did. Um, we did the next one. Well, thank you, John. 131. So that brings us to 132. Uh, authorize the purchase of gasoline from New York State OGS contract with Sprague uh, Operating Resources LLC. Second. Seconded by Council Bouvier. All in favor? Aye. 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 Approved. Town Board Resolution 133 of 2020 authorize the purchase of road salt from the New York State OGS contract with Atlantic Salt Incorporated. Second. Seconded by Council Lobstad. All in favor? Aye. 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 Approved. 134. Co-sponsored with Council Bouvier. Authorizes the supervisor to execute a 2020 contract extension with Patricia Aitken as part-time program coordinator for the Conic Estuary Program. Second. Seconded by Council Bouvier. All in favor? Aye. 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 Approved. Town Board Resolution 2020-135. Authorize the supervisor to execute contract with Eagle Control Corp as sole source provider for the supply of constant chlora briquettes to perform services and routine maintenance and SCADA upgrades to the constant chlora chlorinator at the Hampton Bays Water District. Second. Okay. Seconded by Council of Lofstad. All in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> Town Board Resolution 2020-136. Authorize the supervisor to execute a new consulting contract with Pace Analytical Services to provide water analysis services to the Hampton Bays Water District. Second. Second by Councilman Scavoni. All in favor? Aye. 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 Approved. Aye. 137 of 2020 authorizes the supervisor to sign a contract with Fox Land mm -hmm. Surveying for an updated survey of the Jackson Avenue complex. Second. Seconded by Councilman Bouvier. All in favor? Aye. 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 Approved. <coughs> Town Board Resolution 2020-138, authorize the supervisor to sign a contract with L.K. McLean Associates, PC, for the professional services to be prov provided for the Oil Wife Creek Habitat Enhancement. Second. Seconded by Councilman Lofstad. All in favor? Aye. 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 Approved. 
Town Board Resolution 2020-139 to authorize the supervisor to sign a sole source contract with General Code LLC for services for the Town Clerk's Office. Second. Seconded by Councilman Scavone. All in favor? Aye. 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 Approved. <coughs> Town Board Resolution 2020-140 authorize the supervisor to sign amendments to existing leases with Bell Ringer, now known as Briscoe Protective, for equipment and monitoring at 399 Mill Road, West Hampton, formerly known as the Bower Barn. Second. Uh, seconded by Councilman <coughs> Pierre. All in favor? Aye. 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 Approved 141-2020. Award and authorized supervisor to sign contract with MRJ Industries, LTD, for Parts Maintenance Administration Office Relocation. Second. Seconded by Council Bouvier. All in favor? Aye. 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 Approved. Town Board Resolution 142 of 2020. Award and authorize the supervisor to sign contract for district-wide well and pump maintenance repair at the Hampton Bays Water District with Delta Well and Pump Incorporated Company Incorporated. Second. Seconded by Council Martel. All in favor? Aye. 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 Approved. Uh, Town Board Resolution 143 of 2020, Upgrade Microsoft Active Directory Services. Second. Seconded by Councilman Lofstad. All in favor? Aye. 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 Approved 144 of 2020, identify authorized agents to work with Bridgehampton National Bank. Second. Seconded by Councilman Bouvier. All in favor? Aye. 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 Approved. I think that brings us to 145 on page 73, right? Yes. 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 Okay. So, recalls and amends resolution 103-4 of 2019, agreement with Thompson Reuters. Second. Uh, seconded by Councilman Martell. All in favor? Aye. 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 Approved. Uh, so, number 146, I need to withdraw. There is a correct resolution in the walk-on packet uh, identified by ID 33484. So um, consider 146 withdrawn. I'll move on to 147. 2019 request for proposals to provide planning and engineering for the implementation of the Hampton Bay's bicycle lane and multi-use trail in the town of Southampton. Second. Uh, second by... Uh, Councilman Bouvier, who's the co-sponsor on this resolution. Uh, all of them? Aye. 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 Approved. Uh, 148. Uh, that's the 2020 through 2024 capital budget for the Shinnecock commercial dock. Second. Um, I'm sorry, uh, seconded by Councilman Lofstad. All in favor? Favor. Aye. 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 Approved. Um, 149 of 2020 amends the 20 through 24 capital budget for townwide heavy equipment. Second. Uh, seconded by Councilman Schiavone. All in favor? Aye. 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 Approved. 150 of 2020 authorized general fund and park town pay as you go purchase for various town computers and large format scanners. Second. Second by Councilman Martel. All in favor? Aye. 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 Approved. Town Board Resolution 2020-151. Authorized general fund pays you go purchase for x-ray machine for Justice Court. Second. Second by Councilman Bouvier. All in favor? Aye. 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 Approved. 152 of 2020 appoints individuals to the architectural review board. Um, these are the existing. Yeah, let's get a second first. Uh, second. second by Councilman Bouvier. So uh, Michael Charrier uh, it would be a two-year term. Uh, Ted Jankow Jankowski, Jankowski would be a two-year term. Joe Burke would get a three-year term. Julie Keyes, a three-year term. Tim Ruff, a three-year term. Now these members have all in the past had one-year terms. We amended this board last year to include seven members so there is still two seats to fill and uh i believe was janice they'll get one year terms is that yes, correct sir. yes what the last two will get two one new ones will, we'll get one. terms will expire uh, 2020 december 31st 2020. okay 
then thereafter, all terms will be for four years. Right. So the, the result is a staggering of appointments. Yes. Okay. Um, so there's a motion to second. Yes. All in favor? Aye. 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 No, approved. Uh, 153 of 2020 appoints Michael uh, Charrier, Chair of the Architectural Review Board for 2020. Second. Second. Michael's done a great job. He has. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Approved. Town Board Resolution 154 of 2020. Appoint temporary Board of Assessment Review members for 2020. Second. Uh, seconded by Councilman Martel. All in favor? Aye. 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 Approved. Um, 155 of 2020. We appoint individuals to the Conservation Board. Second. Second by Council Bouvier. These are the three names. I, these are, did, did members of this board get a two-year term? Correct. Um, so this year there are three members. How many members on the board in total? Five. Five on this board. So uh, there are three members up this year, Sunshine Gums, uh, Harry Ludlow, and Thomas Rickenbach. Correct. So, and the uh, next resolution, Harry Ludlow is the chair. All right, so let's finish up with this resolution. Uh, so I'll call the vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Approved. All right, 156 uh, of 2020, appointing Harry Ludlow chair of the Conservation Board in, for 2020. Second. Seconded by Councilman Bouvier. You served with him? I did for two years. It's a great board, and they do a lot of great work. Yeah, he seems to do a good job with it. So. Yeah, I'm, now I'm liaison to the board. I'm very, very happy to, to be in that position. All right, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Approved. 157 of 2020 appoints George Hine, Vice Chair of the Conservation Board for 2020. Second. Uh, second by Councilman Bouvier. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 158 of 2020. We appoint Stephanie Davis to the Landmarks and Historic Districts Board. Second. And you got to see a little bit of what they do today. <laughs> so they, they do a great job too. And I know Stephanie is really a, a very a, active participant. It's a prolific board as well. They, you know, they recording all the history. It's pages and pages. The reports are very thorough and detailed. And it's, it's a really wonderful group. All right, so we have a motion and second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Approved. 159 of 2020 uh, appoints Ed Wasnowski, Chair of the Landmarks and Historic Districts Board. Second. For 2020. Seconded by Councilman Bouvier. Um, Ed's doing a great job. Um, he stepped up he, well, he you know, a couple years ago to take the uh, take the helm, and he's, uh, I think, doing an excellent job there. So. Uh, Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Approved. Uh, 160 of 2020 appoints members to the Licensing Review Board for 2020. Uh, Mark Shifford, Anthony Natalia, Anne-Marie Fulham, Thomas Kerr, and Edmund Moore. Second. Seconded by Councilman Martin. <coughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 <coughs> Approved. Uh, 161 of 2020 appoints Anthony Natalia chair of the licensing review board for 2020. Second. Seconded by Councilman Schimoni, all in favor. Aye. 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 Approved. And uh, Anthony does a good job out there as well. 162 of 2020 appoints, uh, reappoints individuals to the Public Safety Commission. Second. Seconded by Councilman Mofstad. This reappoints Ed Knight for third. Um, and uh, Robert Ross. Uh, is motion a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Approved. Uh, uh, 163 of 2020 uh, appoints Robert Ross as chair of the Public Safety Commission. Same second. For 2020. Same second. Council Mopstad. And uh, yeah, I remember a few years ago, Rob was reluctant to, to do this, and so we're really happy that he stepped up. and. Um, is continuing to serve in this capacity. He's a busy man. He's, uh, uh, you know, involved with Southampton Hospital and the administration there. But uh, he's uh, got a wealth of knowledge and was a former aide or deputy supervisor. I think I want to say to Skip Heaney. So I knew, I've known Robert a long time. So uh, we appreciate him doing this. 
all in favor? Aye. 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 Approved. Uh, 164 of 2020 reappoints Jason Hahn to the Zoning Board of Appeals. Second. Seconded by Councilman Schiavone. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Approved. Um, Jason's doing a good job here, too. 165 of 2020 appoints Adam Grossman. Uh, chair, he's the current chair, is reappointing the chair of the Zoning Board of Appeals for 2020. Second. Seconded by Councilman Schiavone. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, Adam, for your service. Uh, 166 of 2020. Uh, appoints Brian DeSessa, Vice Chair of the Zoning Board of Appeals for 2020. Second. Seconded by Councilman Schiavone. All in favor? Aye. 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 Approved. 167 of 2020. Reappoints members to the Transportation Commission. Second. Second by Councilman Schiavone. All in favor? Aye. 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 Approves. Approved. 168 of 2020. Appoints uh, Vincent Taldone to the Transportation Committee. Second. Second by Councilman Martel. All in favor? Aye. 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 Approved. I think she'll be a great member of that. Um, 169 of 2020 appoints the Agricultural Advisory Committee for 2020. Second. Uh, seconded by Councilman Schiavone, and uh, the one opening is being filled by Rachel S uh, Stevens. So she's new, everyone else is uh, continuing to serve. So a motion to second, all in favor? Aye. 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 <coughs> Town Board Resolution 170 of 2020, appoint the 2020 Airport Noise Advisory Committee. Second. Um, so Did I miss No, I'm just looking at something. Uh, um, is this missing a name? Um, yeah. Ron Klausner, I thought was on this committee. Yes, he... Am I missing it? Is he on this? Yes. Tommy John? Yes, he is on the committee and uh, his name needs to be added. All right, so can you just change the motion to motion to Sure. Bend? Thank you for catching that. I'd like to make a motion to add Ron Klausner to the uh, list of people on the Airport Noise Advisory Committee for 2020. Second. Uh, a second to amend the resolution. Uh, by Councilman Lofstad, all in favor? Aye. 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 So now we'll have a motion to approve as amended. Second. And seconded by Councilman Louvier. Uh, Madam Clerk, you got that. Ron Klausner, we're adding. Uh, all right, all in favor? Aye. 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 Approved. All right, 171 of 2020 appoints the Anti-Bias Task Force Committee for 2020. Second. Seconded by Councilman Bouvier, who's the liaison, I believe. Yes, that's board. correct. Um, a lot of and I'm just, there. I'm just double I'm checking gonna, the names the there. <laughs> all right, all in favor? Aye. 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 172 of 2020 reappoints uh, Richard Sheehan to the Audit Advisory Committee. Second. Seconded by Councilman Lofstad, all in favor? Aye. 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 Approved, uh, 173 of 2020. Appoints Edward Moneypenny, Chair of the Audit Advisory Committee for 2020. Second. Uh, seconded by Councilman Schiavone. Um, I, I try to go to all these meetings when I can, and uh, Ed does an excellent job. We're very fortunate to have him. He does. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Approved. Uh, 174 2020 appoints the 2020 Citizen Advisory Committee members. Second. Second is by uh, John Bouvier. We are still working on uh, additions to the Hampton Bay CAC, so we don't have that in here, um, but hopefully we will uh, have that information. But this does appoint um, a lot of people to various committees, and 
sets the chair and vice chair or co-chair or secretary in some cases as well. So uh, we had a motion to second all of them. Aye. Aye. Uh, <coughs> we thank everybody who serves. Moving on to 175, uh, retain Stephen O'Brien and of Brian, O'Brien and O'Brien, LLP in, in the matter of Thomas J. Salvatore versus Deborah Renee Braithwaite and Gary J. Weber. Second. Seconded by Councilman Schiavone, all in favor? Aye. 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 176. <clears throat> 2020 authorizes community preservation fund tax refund pursuant to the first time home buyers exemption for Diana M. Londono. Second. Londono. Second. Seconded by uh, Councilman Bouvier. All in favor? Aye. 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 Approved. 177 of 2020 authorizes community preservation fund tax refund pursuant to the first time home buyers exemption for Wilson Calais and Nidia Chabla. Second. Second by Councilman Skibodi. All in favor? Aye. 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 Approved. Town Board Resolution 2020-178 to authorize waiver of parks and recreation facility use for the Conic Baykeeper. Second. Seconded by Councilman Mortel. All in favor? Aye. 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 Approved. Yes, we did. We did 179. Uh, 180. Accepts the retirement of Michael Benacasa, Chief Building Inspector in Land Management. Second. Seconded by Councilman Bouvier. So on the motion, these are never easy, particularly when somebody has served the town so uh, nobly and honorably for so many years. Um, it's a really tough job, Chief Building Inspector, a really hard job. People are always asking for one thing or another. They feel like they're not being treated fairly or somebody else is, you know, being treated favorably. Or It's a hard job. You really have to be an impartial, ref you know, umpire, referee. Um, and you have to resist all those people pulling you one way or another. You have a tremendous amount of staff that you have to oversee. It's complicated work. This is, you know, no ordinary town, the town of Southampton. Some of the construction that happens here, you know, enormous homes in some cases. And, um, you know, Mike really has uh, come to us many times when he felt the code needed to be tweaked uh, to uh, adjust for problems that he was seeing out in the field. Um, he's fought for his employees. He's um, I think done a great job as building inspector, and uh, I'm sorry to, to see him leave. He has earned his retirement for sure, mm -hmm. and I wish him the absolute best. But you know, when you have somebody who's you know a legacy like this in the town, it's it's hard sometimes to say goodbye. So, uh, um, but with some reluctance, I will accept his retirement. <laughs> uh, we had a second on this as well, right? Anybody else? No, I just wanted to echo what Mike's been here a long time. Has done an awful lot. And you're right. He fights. Oh, I, I, the way I remember him is always coming upstairs and fighting for his employees. Now, I, I, I like that in someone. And uh, he's arbitrated some difficult, difficult applications, and he's uh, he's walked a, a hard line. I wish him the very, very best in his retirement, and um, uh, all the best of luck. And thank thank him for his service. Anyone else? Thanks, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Reluctantly, aye. Take shoes to fill. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, 181 of 2020 appoints Richard McEwen to Water District Superintendent in the Hampton Bays Water District. Second. Uh, seconded by Councilman Martell. So I, I want to speak on this one, too. I literally just got off the phone with Rich. <laughs> right before I walked in, they had about four water water main breaks that they fixed in the last few days, and very expeditiously. Um, you know, we've had all kinds of issues when the, when the pipe broke under Shinnecock Bay. And these, you know, Rich has been in sort of uh, through an initiation by fire. You know, after Robbie King, who was there for a number of years, um, 
left, we had a big hole to fill. And uh, Rich actually has been there, I want to say, 38 years. I mean, he has more institutional knowledge than anybody there. And um, he stepped up and, uh, you know, the reports I'm getting from customers there in terms of his customer service and his willingness to really try to help uh, is really, really very positive. The, everybody seems to be working together really closely. Um, people, you know, he was commenting today how it's, it felt, felt like the old days where people were dropping into the office and complimenting them and just talking about how the fishing was and, you know, it's uh, very folksy, but, uh, you know, I've been able to work with him. Like today I was trying to figure out, um, you know, an issue in the Hampton Bay's Water District and asked him to look into something for me. Um, he's been very responsive. Um, he's kept me in the loop. And uh, initially, when he interviewed for this post, um, and, you know, I was maybe thinking about bringing somebody else from the outside in, and time went on, uh, months went by, and every single problem that cropped up in those intervening months he was able to solve. He was able to solve, and he built up in me a level of confidence where I got to the point to say, look, we have somebody good here, and he can handle this job with the right support, the right engineering help, the right help with the, you know, some of the, the health science, but, uh, you know, he's, when it comes to managing the facilities, the pumps, the motors, yeah, he really, you know, he knows how to maintain the equipment. So, um, and he seems to have really uh, learned quickly how to manage people as well and build a team. There's a sense of team there now that uh, is stronger than I've seen it. So, um, I'm pleased to bring forward this resolution to appoint uh, Rich McEwen as superintendent. Second. Seconded by Councilman Scavone. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Approved. <coughs> um, 182 of 2020 appoints James Cappers uh, to assistant water district superintendent in the Hampton Bay's uh, water district. Second. Seconded by Council Martell. So Rich has been acting for a superintendent and acting as assistant superintendent really has been James Cappers. Um, he's uh, Rich's right hand person. Um, he does a lot of the administrative work, a lot of the paperwork, has really, uh, really stepped up. You know, both of these gentlemen have, you know, passed their civil service examinations for these posts, so they're qualified for these positions. And, uh, you know, James is young. He's got, I think, a great career ahead of him. Um, he had turned down an offer at a neighboring water district for quite a bit more money. He just really wanted to stay here in Hampton Bays where his home is, and uh, we appreciate that. So uh, I'm uh, pleased to forward uh, James Capper's name as assistant uh, water district superintendent. Anyone else? All in favor? Aye. 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 Congratulations to both of those gentlemen. Um, the next one I need to amend. I have the amendment language, so this is 183. Okay, yeah, you should have it in your walk-on folder. So uh, we're adding a second whereas clause. So the whereas that would be inserted after the first whereas um, will read, whereas the town determined there was a need to backfill the position of senior water treatment plant operator 1B in the Hampton Bay's Water District and to place the title on the 40-hour new and seven-step salary schedules at grade J. Now, therefore, be it. Then it goes into the resolve. There's also a, in the title and in the first resolve, um, it's a type 1B operator. So the title will read treatment, treatment plan type 1B operator and then in the resolve clause, it says water treatment plant operator, senior water treatment plant operator type 1B. Um, Son, do you have those changes? I'm I sorry, do, you yes. Don't. I okay. have the language, thank you. 
Okay, so um, I'll make a motion to amend along the lines of what I just read. Is there a second? Second. So, second by Councilman Martell to amend. All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, I will make a motion to approve as amended. Second. Seconded by Councilman uh, Schiavone. Uh, just on this motion, you know, as we have, uh, you've all seen the, the draft of our Bart Lucci report on the uh, operations of the water district. Uh, they say at minimum there, there really needs to be somebody in this title, senior water treatment plant operator. Um, we don't have anybody um, in this title. So, uh, and Warren Booth, um, I've worked with him pretty closely on water testing. We've upped the frequency of water testing quite a bit. I now have him uh, not only emailing me, but calling me anytime there's any exceedances there. Um, I discussed this with Rich McEwen um, in terms of uh, this promotion, and uh, everybody is comfortable with it. So uh, I congratulate Warren, and we'll, we'll call the vote. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right. That's approved. All right, now 184 is approved as amended. Okay, 184 of 2020 appoints Ryan Murphy to the Town Code Compliance and Emergency Management Administrator in Public Safety. This is our Public Safety Director. Second. So second Sorry. by uh, Councilman Lofstad. Um, I know you've all met Ryan. We've interviewed him. Um, we'll make uh, resumes available to uh, anybody who wishes to see. You know, we, we had an extraordinary uh, slate of candidates to pick from. Uh, like, really impressive. People with, you know, great law enforcement backgrounds, detective, investigatory backgrounds. Um, this public safety post is a multifaceted post. It includes overseeing a fire marshal, it includes overseeing animal control, it includes overseeing ordinance, and it includes emergency preparedness and emergency response. Um, it's almost like Ryan was born for this position. Um, you know, he has extensive firematic experience, extensive. Um, he has extensive code enforcement um, uh, experience, and he has extensive emergency management experience. Um, you know, he's at the county now, that's his full-time job. Uh, I've dealt with Ryan in emergency situations. He was out there at Dune Road uh, on behalf of the county when we were trying to shore up the berm and keep a breach from occurring. Um, he's a guy who's meticulous. He does his homework, he does his research. He may not come on too strong or too heavy-handed, um, but he is um, confident in his abilities based on extensive amount of training and, and, and an extensive amount of homework. I, I think he's going to do a phenomenal job uh, with the personnel. Uh, he'll work really close with the town attorney's office and the, the justice courts. Um, he'll, he'll work really well with the fire, fire folks. Um, I, you know, I was I was impressed with him and his background. He interviewed very strongly, and uh, I know you all met him. I know you share my uh, confidence. I'm looking forward to him stepping up. But you know, one of the things that gives me, I think, the most confidence, you know, you know, I'm not going to be here as supervisor forever. But emergencies will occur, and to have somebody working for the town with his depth of knowledge and the relationships, the interagency relationships that he has built up, to have somebody like that here when there is a hurricane or, you know, another type of event, you know, I'll, I'll feel, I'll sleep better knowing that the town has somebody like that. There's going to be a continuity. Supervisors will come and go. But to have a civil servant in a post like this that, you know, knows what to do. I mean, he was deeply involved in Superstorm Sandy for the county, you know, heading some of those operations in terms of the emergency response. 
Um, I think we're very fortunate to, to have this guy coming aboard here. So uh, I'm pleased to forward his name for this uh, position. Um, we have a second? Yes. Any yes, other discussion? Yeah. All right. All right. You'll all meet him soon. All in favor? Aye. 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 <clears throat> All right, 185 of 2020 <coughs> uh, authorizes drug court judge to attend the Association of Drug Court Judicial Training Conference. Second. Second by Councilman Simone. All in favor? Aye. 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 Approved. Uh, 186 of 2020 authorizes justice court personnel to attend New York State Magistrates Association of New York State and New York State Association of Magistrates Court Clerks, Inc. Annual conference. Second. Seconded by Councilman Martel. All in favor? Aye. 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 Approved. 187 of 2020 authorizes town engineer Christine Fenton to attend the Association of Towns Annual Conference. Second. Seconded by Councilman Olivier. All in favor? Aye. 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 Approved. 188 of 2020 workplace <coughs> wellness program. Second. Seconded by Councilman uh, Schiavone. Um, all kinds of components to this. You know, lots of screenings and you know, mammography, prostate screening. Um, uh, we had a motion second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Approved. Um, Town Board Resolution 189 of 2020. Notice a public hearing to consider amending Town Code Chapter. 312-11 authorizing a stop sign at the intersection of Southampton Hills Court and Middle Line Highway. Second. Second. Seconded by Councilman Mortel. This would be a, a hearing February 11th mm -hmm. uh, at 1 p.m. at Town Hall. Uh, was a motion second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Approved. Town Board Resolution 190 of 2020. Notice of public hearing to consider amending town code 312-15, vehicles and traffic, rescinding authorization of a yield sign at the intersection of Windermere Close and Gardner's Lane. But again, that would be to occur February 11th, same, same time, same place, same back channel. <laughs> 1 p.m., seconded by Councilman Martel. All good? Aye. 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 Town Board Resolution 191 of 2020. Notice of public hearing to consider amending Town Code Chapter 312-9, authorizing a stop sign at the intersection of Windermere Close and Gardner's Lane. Again, February 11th. Second. 1 p.m. Seconded by Council Martel. All in favor? Aye. 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 Approved. We did 192 already. So you stuck it out the whole night here, right? <laughs> so are we, are we uh, providing sufficient entertainment value? <laughs> <laughs> That's good. We do not do Why that. watch on CTV <laughs> when you can see us live <laughs> in person? Oh, all right, John, you're up. 193. Oh, wait a minute. Did no? Yes. 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 Oh, right. Stop. I didn't have a note on it. Town Board Resolution 2020-193 to recall and amend Resolution 219-1160 Road Review Application for 18 Fairway Court, LLC, 0900-021.00-01.00-010.009, situate at Noyak is accepted. We love hearing you read those things. <laughs> Second. Seconded by Councilman Schiavone. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, to the walk on packet. Uh, resolution ID 33484 recalls and amends Town Board Resolution uh, 1265 of 2019 for the Hampton Hopper and the Hampton Jitney. Second. So we're just changing the date to March 31st. That lines up with the funding. Seconded by Councilman Schiavone. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, approved. 
33486 authorizes the supervisor to sign a second amendment to a lease agreement with American Towers LLC for cell tower lease at 507, 507 Middle Line Highway. Second. Second by Councilman Schiavone. All in favor? Aye. I approve the last resolution of this evening. Resolution 33488 is warrant number two, capital number two, CPF number two, and payroll liability. Second. Seconded by Councilman Bouvier. All in favor? Aye. 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 Approve. All right. That's the end of our agenda. Is there any other business? Any other business? Hearing none, I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. Second by Councilman Bouvier. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.